record the issuance of, so let's talk about the issuance of common stock. How do we record it? So we always have to record what the par value is and the excess of the par value. If we know all of our other classes from our other lectures, this should be a simple entry, right? If we, we'll get a statement, right? That on June 5th, we issued 30,000 sh shares at $10 par value stock, and we issued them for $12 per share. That means a corporation received $12 per share. How do we record this transac transaction? The cash is always gonna be that what we received, the $12 per share times 30,000. By now you should know what the normal balance and everything is for cash, right? Debit, cash, cash is an asset, all that fun stuff, short-term asset. And so that 360,000 should be easy peasy. The rest, common stock, $10 par value, and the paid in capital are going to be equity entries. And they just need to be bifurcated by the par value listed, right? So we know that the right size has to be a liability or equity. We're talking about equity. Common stock is always equity. So it's really just a classification. What is par value versus non-par? So 300,000 par value is a 30,000 times a 10. And then the remainder is the two times a 30,000. That's the excess of par. And that's a journal entry. Debit cash, 360,000. Credit common stock, 300,000. Credit paid in capital and excess of par value, 60,000. That's it. That's if we issue it at a premium. Then on the financial statement, this is how it would be listed. You'd have your stockholders equity of 300,000 and you'd have all of this is important. You'd list what the par value is, how many shares are authorized and how many shares are issued and outstanding. Where would you get this information? The articles of incorporation would tell you how many shares are authorized. And then corporations have something called cap tables that monitor all of their investments or all their investors, where you would then figure out how many shares they've actually issued. Normally like a legal firm would control this, but as an accountant, you get to see these as well. I used to audit cap tables or capitalization tables where you'd see all these shares issued and outstanding. In future classes, you'll learn about options and RSUs and all that fun stuff. That's way too complex for this lecture, uh, but just know that it, that'll go into play with this disclosure. Uh, and then we have paid in capital and excess of par. That's a separate amount. And then our retained earnings. And then this is generally our equity. To see how it can get more complex, just so you see like where you eventually go and all the different types of transactions we can get to. Wait, where is it? Retained earnings. See, in Apple, we don't have a lot of other issues. It's relatively simple. This is exactly what we talked about. We have our, wait, paid in capital. The par value is a fraction of a cent. Shares authorized, shares issued and outstanding. They have the retained earnings and then they have this concept of other comprehensive income and loss. You'll learn about that in another class. But then if you get some other financial statements, you'll learn about, um, you'll learn about options and RSUs. You can see we're pretty much there for equity for, uh, on the Apple. So you should be able to prepare something like that. What if we issue no par value common stock? So legally I might, say, I don't want my stock to have any par value. We just say common stock, no par value. That's all. It's not that hard, right? Nothing, nothing different. You just don't have to split up the paid in capital in excess. This isn't common though. Most companies stay with a par value. That's the most common way to structure a corporation. Stated value is the exact same as, I'm not gonna make it too complex, exact same concept as, uh, as par value, except we just say stated value. You just change the disclosure name. So don't try to make it too complex. I'm not gonna go over it in too much detail. Well, professor? Yep. Sorry, I had a question about no par value stock. So is there any benefit to choosing that over stock with a par value or is it just that no one uses it because it's old? Well, the, the, some people don't use, this whole concept of par value is pretty antiquated concept. It's a pretty oh. antiquated concept. There's really not a lot of legal, in my understanding, there's not a lot of legal reasons to have a par value, and that the, the re legal reasons to have them are pretty nuanced. Like if a company goes bankrupt, you're going to have your own issues. So uh, some com some people prefer to do the no par value just so they don't have to deal with the accounting. But most like, most people who don't make businesses are uh, most people who make businesses aren't worried about this, right? Like about the accounting. This is just accounting. Okay. So <laughs> there's no real like there's there might be some legal value. You could talk to an attorney about it, but I think it's pretty minuscule. So just know that, that sense. 
different so, ways that they could structure the business that we might have to account for it differently. But most of the time, the, the standard legal term people use is a par value. Okay, so like as like a future, I don't know, accountant, I would just have to worry about what my particular company that I work for wants me to do, right? Yeah, exactly. What's what's written in their corporation? Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep, exactly. No problem. And then if you wanted to make your own business, I think that the it's a pretty unimportant topic, but you can always talk to your attorney, an attorney about it before you do it. But I, I, my understanding is it's very non-consequential. Okay, thank you, Professor. No, oh, good question. Christina. And then issuing stock for non-cash assets. Oh yeah, before, uh, before I jump into this, there's an important question too, is like when I started my business, I didn't understand what it meant and I spent way too much time trying to figure out the value of my business. So it's important to know when some things are just unimportant, right? Like if it's not a big deal, don't let it block you from starting a business. So uh, issuing stock for non-cash assets. So par value stock on June 10th, 4,000 shares of 20 per value, par value stock per land value at $105,000. All we're saying here is sometimes we receive things instead of cash, especially if it's a startup business. Right? Like, what if I want to give, what if I want to start a real estate business and I own some properties and I want to give those properties to my real estate business instead of holding them individually? I could give the land at fair value in exchange for the par value stock and whatever that land is at fair value, the excess of it on the day I exchange it will be my paid in capital. So this calculation is not too tough, right? We got, we gave 4,000 shares exchange for that, for the land. 4,000 shares have a $20 par value. So that's the 80,000 credit the 80,000. We know the land's worth 105,000 on the day of transfer. That'll be the new historical cost. And then that difference is our paid in capital and excess. Land is an asset, it has a debit balance, equity is a credit, as a, 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 is an equity, equity is as a normal balance of a credit. So we go through some of these journal entries. And we issued 80 shares of $5 par value common stock for $700 cash. It's simple like plugging math. I just call these plugs, right? You just really have to find the difference. It's not too complex. The cash, we know 700 was always gonna be the debit. That should be easy. The 400 comes from the 80 times the five. I don't think I have to pull up the calculator for this one even. And then the difference of these is our paid in capital access. What if a corporation issues $40 in exchange for efforts? Like I, I could get shares in, in exchange for accounting work. Uh, I used to consider doing this. I used to do this and then I stopped because startups are pretty hard to monitor um, how much your stock is worth. That I could say, hey, instead of you paying me $100, $200 an hour, you give me a, you know five shares every hour. And then at the end of the month, you issue these shares to me. Many co uh, consultants do this. So from the company's perspective, it's actually an expense, right? Instead of giving them cash and then them buying stock with cash, they just send it, have an expense. And then the common stock is still issued at the par value. It's a one per stated value here. So that's 40 shares. So 40 times the one is the 40. And the remainder is the paid in capital in excess of stated value. So just know if they say stated value, you have to write stated value. We talked about the land before. They issue land, there's no stated value. That's whatever the land's worth. And then there's preferred stock. Preferred stock have its own characteristics, which we'll talk about in, uh, later today. But if we issued for preferred stock, preferred stock, we have the cash, we have the par value, which is the 20 times the 30 par value and anything in excess is our excess, right? So I hopefully that is this math isn't too complex. I think this is one of the easier topics we've talked about. <laughs> 